Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you're all well. So I wanted to do just one more video to mark one year since the end of my no buy year, kind of just to share with you what happened next, what are the permanent changes and mindset shifts that have come about from the experience. I did intend including this in my last video, but it would have been way too long, so here we are. Now, without doubt, the biggest change that came about after the no buy year was that I finally purchased my own home and I cannot begin to tell you just how much happier I am here than I was in my previous rented property. It has been worth passing on every single purchase that I considered throughout that no buy year, like without doubt. But I want to be really clear, I didn't just do a no buy year and then ta-da, I can afford a, a house deposit. Um, if I was to say that, I would probably be as annoying as those people who say things like, well, just don't buy Starbucks, don't eat avo and toast, and then you'll be able to afford a house. Mm, not true. Um, I actually started saving for a, a house or with the intention uh, of creating a house deposit back in November 2018. So it took the best part of kind of three to three and a half years to find that kind of brilliant combination of the right house and a big enough uh, deposit that I felt really comfortable to make that leap. Um, so it really wasn't um, an overnight thing or just a one year thing. But I do, however, think doing the no buy really helped because after years of the market being reasonably stable, kind of house prices were growing each year, sort of maybe a little bit above inflation, but not really um, anything else. In 2020 and 2021, the house prices rocketed, in part due to unnecessary schemes like the stamp duty relief. Now, I, when I say unnecessary, I'm sure some people benefit, benefited from it. I know a lot of second steppers really benefited from it, but it took away the only advantage that first time buyers had, and it supercharged a market that was already showing signs of strong recovery post lockdown. Um, prices were already, you know, demand was already really kind of high. Uh, so I don't really think it helped that many people because what tended to happen was that savings you would make in stamp duty was just kind of added on to the purchase price by or the sale price by the vendors anyway so I really don't think it helped. Anyway, I do, as I say, I do think it helped because with prices rising, uh, that kind of, those extra savings that I had and therefore could turn into a deposit and um, kind of make this purchase feel a little bit more comfortable than um, it would have been because prices were obviously higher and it was more challenging to get on the housing market than it had been pre-pandemic. Secondly, by not shopping, I've kind of embraced just having less. Now, I don't really consider myself to be a minimalist, although I think some of you would, but I will probably never have um, a capsule wardrobe. I definitely have too many blankets and cushions and candles to fit the aesthetic. Um, I also definitely own far too many things to fit into the hardcore minimalist club, but I've read an awful lot about minimalism and there are some real benefits to be found in some of the principles. And I guess you could say that I kind of apply some of those principles to my life. Now that could be an entire video in itself, so I'll just keep it to this. By having fewer items, in part by bringing less into the home, this has given me one more time. I spend so much less time organizing, tidying, cleaning. Now, I really like the end result of a clean and tidy home, not so much the process. So spending less time doing that has been great. I've also spent a lot less time actually shopping and it's amazing how time consuming shopping can actually be. So that's just given me more time to be able to do other things I enjoy like reading or just making these videos. Two, less stress. Now, I actually find it quite difficult to fully relax in a environment that is messy or cluttered. And since it's now become so much easier and quicker to keep everything kind of clean, tidy, etc., and kind of looking really nice, then I find it so much easier to relax. And in turn, I found that, that that's also kind of given me the headspace to be able to be much more creative and to kind of really uh, work effectively on projects and so on. Three, I make less excuses. So when my house used to be quite cluttered and messy, um, I used to kind of make excuses for why I couldn't go out anywhere, I maybe couldn't work out, or I didn't have time to make a YouTube video because I needed to get the house sorted. Whereas now, like, 
10 minutes it's done in fact most of the time it stays tidy all the time which is just great um, and you know now I'm finding it so much easier you know half an hour at most and I'm out of the door enjoying the places that I love to visit or doing the things that I want to do or you know just making videos I actually find it really interesting how much of an overlap there can be with channels that talk about personal finance and decluttering. I just kind of find that really interesting. And so many of you have actually told me that once you started on your no buys, you really got into decluttering as well. So I definitely think there's a link. Thirdly, emotional spending and impulse purchases are mostly a thing of the past. I tend to really think about my purchases and only buy what I truly want or need. An example of this was the other day I went to TK Maxx. I was looking for some specific things for the house and I tend to find um, real treasure in there from time to time. And um, when I got there, I found some things that were kind of what I was looking for, but not quite. I mean, they weren't a million miles away from what I wanted, but I didn't get that, yes, that's what I'm looking for, or, um, you know, that is perfect. I've got to have that kind of feeling. And I think in the past, I've probably been probably been guilty, especially when something isn't particularly expensive, of going, oh, do you know what, that'll do for now, kind of just through impatience, really, of wanting to get sorted. Whereas now I find it better to just walk away from the item that you didn't really kind of like and just wait until I find the item that I really want, as in invariably, you kind of find what you're really looking for a short while after anyway. And then when I was putting this video together, it kind of reminded me of when I very first moved out of home back in 2009. And I think everyone can remember the first time they move out of home. And I mean like into your own place, not college or anywhere where you're sort of supported, um, you know, your own place. It can be quite a steep um, financial learning curve. Um, but at the time I remember people would say to me, you know, why don't you buy this lamp? It's only five pounds and it's not quite what you want, but you can replace it in the future. Or someone might say to me, oh, well, you know, why don't you just get some flat pack furniture to put you on? And at the time, money felt so precious to me um, that I just point blank refused to buy anything, even if it was cheap, if it wasn't what I was looking for. Because my mindset at the time was if I spend, I don't know, 10 pounds on this item that isn't what I want, that is 10 pounds that I can't put towards an item that I really, really want. And looking back, I wish I'd not kind of fallen into uh, kind of getting things that will do because ironically, I still have pretty much all of the furniture that I bought when I very first moved out all those years ago. I still have all the lamps that I bought back then because I saved, I waited till I could afford what I really, really wanted. And when I think now, if I'd have just bought kind of things that were cheaper, that I didn't really want, I probably would have replaced them multiple times. Whereas because I really, really kind of I was just adamant that I wanted things that I thought were beautiful, that I thought were gorgeous quality, that I thought would make my home feel just such a nice place. And I, I just think that that was such a better way of thinking of things than kind of some of the things that I've fallen into over the years. Anyway, just reminded me of that. Then going back to that TK Maxx visit, Whilst I was there, I also stumbled across some candles from one of my favorite brands. And I think previously, I probably would have just picked them up on impulse because they were also discounted, so they were a great price. Um, but I thought about it. It wasn't what I'd gone to the store for. Um, I've already got several candles in the cupboard that are also beautiful that I haven't yet used. Um, and you know, it wouldn't have been the end of the world if, I, if I'd bought them. I definitely would have used them and got value out of them. But my point is that I'm just being more considered now. Um, you know, even if it is something that I like, if it's something that I would use, and if they're a great price. Next up, my focus has shifted, especially with new purchases, to not only buy what I truly want, but to focus more on quality over quantity. Now, I've always really enjoyed quality items throughout the years, but when you're shopping regularly, unless you have an enormous bank account, some lesser quality items are probably going to creep in from time to time. Now, I think this change will probably most apply to clothing and footwear for me. I just feel like I've got to a place now where I'd rather have a few beautiful quality items that I really look after, really enjoy wearing, than kind of more uh, cheaper on-trend pieces that invariably 
tend to look tired after a short period of time. Um, I just feel like this is the better option for me at the moment. I've also become really much more interested in fabric composition, in um, kind of where in the world it's made and so on. With hindsight, I kind of wish I'd taken this approach um, many years ago because over the years there's been so many beautiful quality items that I maybe was kind of lusting after, I really really wanted, but I perhaps bought cheaper, maybe lower quality items that were maybe similar to that, sort of like a substitute for the item because I perhaps deemed it too expensive. Um, but the irony of all that is those substitute items that I bought have either long since been donated or are well past their best and yet those items that I wanted all that time ago, they're still on my wish list. And I sometimes kind of think I would have been better buying less, but just buying those items that I really, really wanted. Um, because them being good quality, I'd probably still have them now. And then lastly, kind of related to my last point, the amount that I would be willing to spend on an individual item has shifted. And this is mainly because when you're buying quality items made from quality materials, especially if they're made in the UK, then they cost more, it's just a fact. I think most of us have these almost subconscious limits about what we would be prepared to spend for something, kind of, you know, how much we'd be willing to spend on a pair of jeans, how much we'd be willing to spend on a pair of shoes and so on. And I've just kind of come to the realization that if I'm going to be shifting my focus to quality, then I may need to shift those limits of how much I'm willing to spend on something. Now, Will I wait for the sales or try to buy discounted? Of course. Would I consider second hand? Absolutely. But I do think that maybe what I'm willing to spend per item will have to change. Now that's not to say you can't find decent quality items at great prices. Believe it or not, I actually have some River Island garments that are over a decade old and they're still in great condition. Um, so if you shop well, you can find things at great prices. Um, I've no idea what the quality is like now as I haven't shopped in years but you know if you shop around if you shop well if you look at the fabric then you can find great uh, quality pieces at not exorbitant prices I think just for me I've realized that so long as I stick to uh, my budget for clothing and so long as I'm focusing you know I'm not doing the quantity side of things I can have the quality and stay within a budget okay so that's it for today's video I hope that this was interesting in some way the dogs are mithering me for dinner, so I better go. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of your lovely comments on my last video as well. I just love hearing your stories. I promise the next video will be um, probably per personal finance related, but not related to my no buy year for those of you that are bored of hearing about it. Uh, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.